I, I think uh, schools and school leaders, particularly head teachers of my generation and older, uh, are slamming against a new horizon in their own realisation of what needs to be done. It's absolutely apparent to me that regardless of what we do within school, children are going to engage in and use social media. My schools are in South London, in the heart of some of the riot areas uh, of the summer of, of 2011. That was really problematic um, it, for, for many of the, uh, of the services that were having to deal with that in a new way because of social media. It was absolutely no surprise to us in school that uh, young people were communicating with one another. Now, school leaders simply need to get on board with that. Um, it's a fact of the communication now, but we're still operating in a 20th century mind frame, many of us. Uh, because we were born and educated in that era and our experience of school uh, and our experience of school leadership in many respects was bound up with that. Uh, we simply have to shift in school leadership to understanding that this isn't going to go away, nor would we want it to, uh, but it is something to be exploited. Now within a primary school, I think it's absolutely crucial that we exploit that and that we do that intelligently. We don't miss this opportunity. This is an amazing opportunity and it's slipping through our fingers because of concerns, misplaced concerns, about uh, the usual things we hear of political correctness, uh, health and safety, cyberbullying, and so on and so forth. Now, I'm not suggesting that any of those issues aren't important, terribly important, and relevant, but they are not an excuse to let this opportunity for communication and collaboration and connection to be lost. And school leaders have to make that jump and understand and, and perform their risk assessments and all the things that will reassure them. But understand that this is a channel for better communication and all of learning and education pins on communication. I think the role of a leader in establishing um, the validity of sharing practice online is crucial. Um, we're we're um, constantly encouraged by uh, the current administration here in England that uh, we are now within a permissive education society, that we have permission uh, to do things. It takes a very long time for that to filter down uh, to the chalk face. And, and let's be absolutely honest, if the boss doesn't think it's a good idea, if the boss doesn't get behind it, if the boss isn't doing it, then um, you're always going to feel either rebellious or vulnerable, dependent on your disposition as a class teacher, if you're pursuing something. Uh, it's very difficult to feel innovative uh, and to feel courageous about that if you feel that uh, you work within a hierarchical structure in a school and people further up the hierarchy than you are disapproving. So I think it's absolutely crucial that head teachers uh, and principals are able to, to get behind uh, this movement and, and show it to be a good thing by the practice that they do. I'm in my mid-40s and, uh, and so in a sense I'd, I'd missed the Facebook generation uh, and didn't understand it but lots of the children in the schools that I worked did understand it and so I felt it was very important to get involved uh, and, and have uh, an idea of the terrain that they were navigating. The issue I think uh, for school leaders however is that in, in using social media there's a sense in which uh, you can be drawn into uh, a communication field that you haven't fully understood uh, and uh, that operates according to a tempo and dynamics that, that you may not be able to commit to um, and that can have implications that you might not have anticipated. So my initial foray into social media generally um, gave me an understanding of some of the uh, parameters but therefore uh, having gained that understanding of the parameters I then decided I might retreat somewhat from that. We have to recognise where we are ourselves in terms of uh, producers and consumers of social media. Uh, and I have to recognise that I'm in my mid-40s and what I feel is cutting edge is far from it. Um, the, uh, the audience that, uh, that I reach through the use of social media that I make um, are all people of around my generation. I, I'm, I'm not actually reaching uh, younger children, those, those that exist within the schools um, that, that, that I uh, work in. So I, I think there are some significant issues for us there in terms of understanding 
um, how we're reaching uh, and who we're reaching. Within a school, we need to think very carefully about where the voice is uh, around advice for what social media to use. Are we imposing a structure that simply uh, doesn't engage children if that's what we want to do? So the children should be helping us create that and working with us to uh, operate within the medium they want. However, um, when we broadcast across social media, we need to be aware that uh, parents of the children are certainly going to engage uh, with, with some of the technologies that I would use. Um, and that will have its pros and cons. And I think within, uh, within school, we need to be crucially aware of uh, the audience uh, that we're meeting and therefore thinking very carefully about what we say. And we hear a lot, don't we, in, in the media nowadays uh, around uh, what, once you've put it out there into cyberspace, it's there for all time. That's absolutely crucial for a school and for school leadership to be aware of that, that all communication that goes out there in a sense is branded uh, with the school's name and carries the school's reputation with it. So there are some fascinating issues to look at in terms of allowing freedom for people to communicate and use this social media, uh, but to be aware that, that this isn't an unprofessional dialogue. This isn't chatting with your friends. It's actually something that, that represents the school as a whole. I think for me the difference is actually around understanding um, the operational function of, of learning and schools within that and the strategic function and uh, if we don't find that the school's strategy around communication, around the use of technologies, around learning, around interaction with parents, uh, everything to do with the school's uh, ethical and moral and spiritual purpose, um, if, if, we, if we don't think through the audience that we have, then we're going to find that our strategy won't be revealed at all levels and in all communication. And for an organisation such as a school uh, to be effective, its key strategy and vision has to be realized at all levels by all people at all times. So the role of social media between, uh, the, the distinction of social media between the professional and uh, the out of work time is one that can be blurred very easily by the medium. And so we as professionals need to be aware of how we're using it. It doesn't mean that we need to be formal all the time, of course. Um, but it does mean that we need to be aware of our audience and, and that I think will be something that will become increasingly important as people engage with schools and with learning and with the learning that their children are doing and their own learning and the sharing of that uh, across the, the next few years.